Hey everybody, it's Marshall Muggy here. This is going to be my Guardians of the Galaxy 2 post credit scenes video. After this, I'm going to do my Wonder Woman review, finish up with The Flash, go on to Gotham, Arrow, all that stuff. But first, we got to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So this was really fun seeing all these post credit scenes because some of them are kind of joking around a little bit and some of them are actually really serious and lead to other things that could be happening in the future, not only in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but maybe even so on and so forth through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we got to talk about the first one being the Stan Lee um, credit scene. I don't think these are in order. I don't think I put them in order, but I do think I put them in order of how much I liked them, and I really liked this credit scene. Um, Stan Lee, in the movie, actually confirmed the theory that fans have been having throughout his adventures throughout the MCU and the other, um, I guess you could even extend it to the Fox X-Men movies, even, uh, and even the Sony Spider-Man movies, is that his all of his cameos, uh, are the same character. He's playing the same character throughout every movie, which I think is actually crazy. Now, in the movie, we see him with the Watchers. They are this cosmic race. They are a huge race in the comics. I actually explained that in my Easter eggs video, so go watch that if you haven't seen it yet. But in the end credit scene, he actually tries to convince him, them to stay so that he can uh, tell them more of his stories on Earth. So what's happening here is that I think because the Watchers are such a big race, Stan Lee playing the same character could be some type of like agent for them or a spy for them to spy on the people down below. Maybe that's what I'm that's what I'm going with. We also got the end credit scene with Teenage Groot. That was hilarious. I thought that was actually really funny. So that just proves you that we will not have Baby Groot forever, which is a good thing. Because I don't I don't think that everyone would want Baby Groot to come back for another film just because he's funny and cute in this movie. But I really think that if he was in another movie, it would just be really horrible. It would be like, okay, enough baby Groot, let's move on to having our old Groot back. So it does prove that he will be uh, older Groot again. I'm pretty sure that by Infinity War, which is when we'll see the Guardians again, um, I'm sure that that's when he'll be an old Groot again. Because he's a teenage Groot in this film by the end, so I think that in that movie we'll have older Groot. Now we also have Sean Gunn, uh, which if you don't know is the guy standing left to Yondu. I can't remember his character's name in the movie, but Sean Gunn, which is James Gunn's younger brother, I believe, was actually, again, in the movie, but he was playing the replacement Yondu, I guess you could say. I don't think he'll be Yondu, uh, I don't think he'll be like Yondu's replacement. I definitely think though that he might be able to help out the Guardians with the whistle arrow. Um, I don't know if that they'll be going that direction with the character, but it seems to me like that's where they want to go with him, and I think that'd actually be pretty fun to have him as like their new Guardian, right? Because Mantis is officially now a Guardian, so it, does that mean Sean Gunn's gonna be one too? I don't know, but I think that Sean Gunn was actually a really good actor in this movie. He was funny, and he was just nice to have around here uh, as a new, like, refreshing character, right? I think he was in the first movie, too, but he didn't, he didn't have, like, actual lines. So here he does have lines. I think it was great having him on board, right? And we also have the Sylvester Stallone cameo uh, in the movie, but then we also get him later on in the end credit scene with the original Guardians. So he's put the band back together because of Yondu's death, which is kind of sad, but Sylvester Stallone has the other Guardians, the Guardians 3000. I explained them in my Easter eggs video, so go check that out. Um, and I definitely think that they're going to maybe even show up in the third film. I can't remember if it was like Kevin Feige or if it was uh, James Gunn who teased that the original Guardians, the 3000 Guardians, uh, will be back. So they'll be back throughout the MCU. They said that there could be even multiple appearances by them in the MCU. I don't think they'll be getting their own movie. I don't think they're known enough. The Guardians themselves, like the Guardians in the first movie, the Guardians of the Galaxy, weren't known a lot by fans either, but then they ended up getting their own movie. So I guess you could never know for sure who's going to get their movie and who's not, but I don't think that Sylvester Stallone and the others are going to get their own movie. I just think that that's ridiculous. I'm like, they're, they're fun to have as cameos, right? But I don't think as a movie it would be really that satisfactory. Like, that, what, what, what's the word? I guess that, that great, right? And then we also have, again, the biggest cameo I'd have to say in the movie is Adam Warlock's tease. I think that it's fantastic that Adam Warlock is going to be in the MCU. We even wanted him in the MCU for a while, at least I have, right? And I think that he's a great character to have here. So Aisha and the Sovereign, right, create themselves through cocoons. Well, that's how Aisha was made in the comics, is that she came out as a man, uh, and then later on went back into her cocoon and became a woman. I explained that in my Easter eggs video, so go check that out. But in the end credit scene, you can see that she has Adam Warlock in a cocoon, and that he's going to be coming out of the cocoon later on, possibly in Guardians 3. I don't think he'll show up in Infinity War, but I think the Guardians 3, he'll likely be the main villain, right? I think that in Guardians 3, 
he'll be the main villain, and then by the end of the movie, he will uh, realize that he should be a good character, right? He's kind of like an anti-hero in the comics. He does bad things, but he does good things too. Um, so I think that by the end of the movie, he'll help the Guardians take out the Sovereign, and I think it's pretty easy for him to do that because they call him Space Jesus in the comics, right? So I think that it'll be really fun to see him um, in the MCU. Also, his power set is just really interesting. He even got trapped inside the Soul Gem in the comics before until I think it was Silver Surfer who helped him escape. So, he's just really a fun character to have around and an interesting character because he gets himself in those situations, but he also has his fun power set, too. So, it's really fun to see that they've made an effort to put him in the MCU. They didn't, like, just throw him in there. They took time uh, to explain the Sovereign in this movie and then have the end credit scene. So, I like that quite a bit. But what did you guys think of the end credit scenes, the post credit scenes, I guess you could call them? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Which one is your favorite and which one is your least favorite? So again, Wonder Woman review is coming up next. Then I'll catch up with some DC TV Universe videos after that. So don't forget to scream this video out to the world by sharing it down below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys later for some more videos. Bye-bye.